Hey guys, um, I think we might finish Deuteronomy today. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, may your blessings of peace be upon everyone who watches these videos and help us understand the knowledge and wisdom we retain today. And we love you, Lord, and thank you so much for loving us and being so kind and merciful and gracious to us. And we pray and ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, Deut Deuteronomy 32. So this is the Song of Moses, and here are the words. Okay, Deuteronomy 32. Okay. Earth and sky, listen to what I say. Israel, I will teach you. My words will be like gentle rain on tender young plants or like dew on the grass. Join with me in praising the wonderful name of the Lord our God. The Lord is a mighty rock. The Hebrew text has rock, which is sometimes used in poetry to compare the Lord to a mountain where his people can run for protection from their enemies. Okay. The Lord is a mighty rock, and he never does wrong. God never does wrong, ever. Know that. God can always be trusted to bring justice. He sees everything that ever happens. There will be no secrets that will not be unhidden or whatever. Okay, God can always be trusted to bring justice, but you lie and cheat and are unfaithful to him. You have disgraced yourselves and are no longer worthy to be his children. Israel, the Lord is your father, the one who created you, but you repaid him by being foolish. Think about past generations. Ask your parents or any of your elders. They will tell you that God most high gave land to every nation. He assigned a guardian angel to each of them. The, de the Dead Sea Scrolls and one ancient translation, the standard Hebrew text, says, so there were as many nations as Israel. That is, Jacob had children. Okay. So, he assigned them a guardian angel to each of them, but the Lord himself takes care of Israel. Okay, verse 10. Israel, the Lord discovered you in a barren desert filled with howling winds. God became your fortress, protecting you as though you were his own eyes. The Lord was like an eagle teaching its young to fly, always ready to swoop down and catch them on its back. Um. Israel, the Lord led you, and without the aid of a foreign god, he helped you capture the land. Your fields were rich with grain. Olive trees grew in your stony soil, and honey was found among the rocks. Your flocks and herds produced milk and yogurt, and you got choice meat from your sheep and goats that grazed in Bashan. Bashan. Your wheat was the finest, and you drank the best wine. Israel. Okay, here's the note next to Israel. The standard Hebrew text has Jeshurun, a rare name for Israel related to a word meaning honest. The Samaritan Hebrew text in one ancient translation also used Jacob, another name for the ancestor of the nation of Israel. Okay, Israel, you grew fat and rebelled against God, your creator. You rejected the mighty rock, your only place of safety. You made God jealous and angry by worshiping disgusting idols and foreign gods. You, you offered sacrifices to demons, those useless gods. Different ways of referring to gods of other nations. You offered sacrifices to demons, those useless gods that never helped you. New gods that 
your ancestors never worshipped. You turned away from God, your creator. You forgot the mighty rock, the source of your life. You were the Lord's children, but you made him angry. Then, you reject, then he rejected you and said, you are unfaithful and can't be trusted. So I won't answer your prayers. I'll just watch and see what happens to you. You worshipped worthless idols and made me jealous and angry. Now I will send a cruel and, wor and worthless nation to make you jealous and angry. My people, I will breathe out fire that sends you down to the world of the dead. It will scorch your farmlands and burn deep down under the mountains. Ooh, is that a volcano? I'll send disaster after disaster to strike you like arrows. You'll be struck by starvation and deadly diseases, by the fangs of wild animals and poisonous snakes. Young and old alike will be killed in the streets and terrified at home. I wanted to scatter you so no one would remember that you had ever lived, but I dreaded the sound of your enemies saying, we defeated Israel with no help from the Lord. <clears throat> Sorry. Ugh, that's gross after you brush your teeth. <laughs> Ugh. Okay, verse 27. But I dreaded the sound of your enemies saying, <clears throat> we defeated Israel with no help from the Lord. People of Israel, that's what the Lord has said to you. But you don't have good sense and you never listen to advice. If you did, you could see where you were headed. How could one enemy soldier chase a thousand of Israel's troops? Or how could two of theirs pursue 10,000 of ours? It can only happen if the Lord stops protecting Israel and lets the enemy win. Even our enemies know that only our God is a mighty rock. Our enemies are grapevines rooted in the fields of Sodom and Gomorrah. The grapes they produce are full of bitter poison. Their wine is more deadly than cobra venom. But the Lord has written a list of their sins and locked it in his vault. Soon our enemies will get what they deserve. Or I will pay them back. Suddenly they will slip and total disaster will quickly follow. I'm scared of Judgment Day. Because I have a lot to answer for. Okay, verse 36, when only a few of the Lord's people remain, when their strength is gone and some of them are slaves, the Lord will so feel sorry for them and give them justice. But first, the Lord will say, you ran for safety to other gods. Couldn't they help you? You offered them wine and your best sacrifices. Can't those gods help you now or give you protection? Don't you understand? I am the only God. There are no others. I am the one who takes life and gives it again. I punished you with suffering, but now I will heal you and nothing can stop me. I make the solemn promise, just as I live forever, I will take revenge on my hateful enemies. I will sharpen my sword and let it flash like lightning. My arrows will get drunk on enemy blood. My sword will taste the flesh and blood of the enemy. It will kill prisoners and cut off their heads of their leaders. Or long-haired warriors who let their hair grow to show that they had made sacred promises to their gods. Tell the heavens to celebrate and all gods to bow down to the Lord. Or let the nations his people celebrate. Because he will take revenge on those hateful enemies who killed his people. He will forgive the sins of Israel and purify their land. Moses spoke the words of the song so that all the Israelites could hear. And Joshua helped him. 
the Hebrew text has Hosea, Hosea, another form of Joshua's name. Or is that Hosea? No, that's Hosea. Okay. When Moses had finished, he said, Always remember this song I have taught you today, and let it be a warning that you must teach your children to obey everything written in the book of God's law. The law isn't empty words. It can give you a long life in the land that you're going to take. Moses will see the land. Later that day, the Lord said to Moses, Go up to the Ar Abiram mountain range here in Moab across the Jordan River Valley from Jericho. And when you reach the top of Mount Nebo, you will be able to see the land of Canaan, which I am giving to Israel. Then you will die and be buried on the mountaintop, just as your brother Aaron died and was buried on Mount Hor. Both of you were unfaithful to me at Meribah Spring near Kadesh in the Zin Desert. I am God, but there in front of the Israelites, you did not treat me with honor and respect I deserve. So I will give the land to the people of Israel, but you will only get to see it from a distance. Okay, Deuteronomy 33. Moses blesses the tribes of Israel. Moses was a prophet, and before he died, he blessed the tribes of Israel by saying, The Lord came from Mount Sinai, from Edom. He gave light to his people, and his glory was shining from Mount Paran. Thousands of his warriors were with him, and fire was at his right hand. The Lord loves the tribes of Israel, or, other na or the nations. The Lord loves the tribes of Israel, and he protects his people. They listen to his words and worship at his feet. What is this asterisk here? Why would they put an asterisk there? But not Okay. The Lord loves the tribes of Israel, and he protects his people. They listen to his words and worship at his feet. I call the meeting of the tribes of Israel. The Hebrew text also has also uses the name Jeshurun, a rare name for Israel. I call the meeting of the tribes of Israel and gave you God's law. Then you and your leaders made the Lord your king. Tribe of Reuben, you will live even though... Ye, your tribe will always be small. The Lord will listen to you, tribe of Judah, as you beg to come home, come safely home. You fought your enemies alone. Now the Lord will help you. At Massa and Meribah Spring, the Lord tested you, tribe of Levi. You were faithful. Or the Lord tested me, I was faithful. Or the Lord tested Aaron and me, we were faithful. And so the priesthood belongs to the Levi tribe. Protecting Israel's agreement with the Lord was more important to you than the life of your father or mother or brothers or sisters or your own children. You teach God's laws to Israel, and at the place of worship, you offer sacrifices and burn incense. I pray that the, that the Lord will bless everything you do and make you strong enough to crush your, crush your enemies. The Lord Most High loves you, tribe of Benjamin. He will live among your hills and protect you. Descendants of Joseph, the Lord will bless you with precious water from deep wells and with dew from the sky. Month by month, your fruit will ripen in the sunshine. You will have a rich harvest from the slopes of the ancient hills. The Lord who appeared in the burning bush wants to give you the best the land can produce, and it will be a princely crown on Joseph's head. The armies of Ephraim and Manasseh are majestic and fierce like a bull or a wild ox. They will run their spears through faraway nations. Be happy, Zebulun, as, you bo as your boats set sail. Be happy, Issachar, in your tents. The sea will make you wealthy, and from the sandy beach you will get treasure. Possibly a reference to glass made from sand. Glass was rare and very valuable. 
So invite the other tribes or nations to celebrate with you and offer sacrifices to God. Tribe of Gad, the Lord will bless you with more land, so shout his praises. Your tribe is like a lion ripping up its victim. Your leaders met together and chose the best land for your tribe, but you obeyed the Lord and helped the other tribes. Tribe of Dan, you are like a lion cub, startled by a snake, or jumping out from the forest of Bashan. The Lord is pleased with you, people of Naphtali. He will bless you and give you the land to the west and to the south, or land south as far as Lake Galilee. The Lord's greatest blessing is for you, tribe of Asher. You will be the favorite of all the other tribes. You will be rich with olive oil, and have strong town gates with bronze and iron bolts. Your people will be powerful for as long as they live. Israel, no other God is like ours. The clouds are his chariot as he rides across the skies to come and help us. The eternal God is our hiding place. He carries us in his arms. When God tells you to destroy your enemies, he will make them run. Israel, you will live in safety. Your enemies will be gone. The dew will fall from the sky and you will have plenty of grain and wine. The Lord has rescued you and given you more blessings than any other nation. He protects you like a shield and is your majestic sword. Your enemies will bow in fear and you will trample on their back. I'm highlighting all of that last part because God is so loving. Okay, Deuteronomy 34, the death of Moses. Sometime later, Moses left the lowlands of Moab. He went up Mount Pisgah to the peak of Mount Nebo. Mount Nebo was probably one peak of the ridge known as Mount Pisgah which is across the Jordan River from Jericho. The Lord showed him all the land as far north as Gilead and the town of Dan. He let Moses see the territories that would soon belong to the tribes of Naphtali, Ephraim, Manasseh, and Judah, as far west as the Mediterranean Sea. The Lord also showed him the land in the south from the valley near the town of Jericho, known as the City of Palm Trees, down to the town of Zor. The Lord said, Moses, this is the land I was talking about when I solemnly promised Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob that I would give land to their descendants. I have let you see it, but you will not cross the Jordan and go in. And so Moses, the Lord's servant, died there in Moab, just as the Lord had said. The Lord buried him in a valley near the town <clears throat> of Beth Beor, but even today no one knows exactly where. Moses was 120 years old when he died, yet his eyesight was still good and his body was strong. The people of Israel stayed in the lowlands of Moab where they mourned and grieved 30 days for Moses, as was their custom. Joshua becomes the leader of Israel. Before Moses died, he had placed his hands on Joshua, and the Lord had given Joshua wisdom. The Israelites paid attention to what Joshua said and obeyed the commands that the Lord had given Moses. Moses was a great prophet. There has never again been a prophet in Israel like Moses. The Lord spoke face to face with him and sent him to perform powerful miracles in the presence of the Pharaoh of Egypt and his entire nation. No one else has ever had the power to do such great things as Moses did for everyone to see. That's the end of Deuteronomy. I can't believe. I mean, I can believe. I'm happy we're getting this far. Okay, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for your laws and for Moses and for all your prophets, Lord. 
Thank you for always helping us and delivering us from evil. You are so great and so wise and so gracious, and we love you so much, and thank you for loving us unconditionally. Thank you, Lord. We pray and ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, God bless. I love you.